Hey, this is uh, Advanced Class as we're getting into Mondays and Tuesdays. We're in March and apparently the world's kind of crazy because uh, apparently I have a, a shooty pokey lightning stick. Um, and then let's see, we're going to get into dancing here in a little bit. We're going to talk about Dionysus uh, and then yes. we're going to talk about more poor choices. Uh, and let's see, we're going to get to a new race of humans. All kinds of fun things to get into. Let's see. And, and Jay just died. We missed him already. All right, let's see. Again, the kids at home, as long as I can see you. If I can only see the top of your head, then again, I'm going to have to remove you. Or if you're the kid that we summon by saying your name. Oh, hang on. Wait, never mind. He just summoned himself. We didn't. Wow. Normally, to make Hades appear, you have to say his name. But this time, just thinking about Hades. Wait, and you're wearing a black hoodie? Are you just embracing your Hades form? Nicely done, Rui Hit. Yeah, he's, he's got a full Hades thing going on right now. All right. And then other kid uh, realized all I'm seeing is the top of your noggin. So if you get yourself removed here in a moment, I'm going to assume it's because you're not paying attention. But we'll just go ahead. You're, you're not. For all I know, I think it's a wig. I don't even think it's your head. So let's remove you and see what happens when I remove the top of that wig. There we go. Fake head is gone. All right. So now let us run through the quiz from last week. It's going to be the speedy version because apparently you guys were all smart. So we don't have to spend as long on it. Which Olympian shared the abilities of Cyclops? Nicely done. That's where Hephaestus comes in. Uh oh, the kid with the wig is back. Mm -hmm. And can I see more than? Let's see if that pops up. Hey, I can see more than the top of your head this time. That's why I don't shake your head at me. I was yelling at you. You ignored me. And after that, we have who is the ironically wussy Olympian? Ari. Ari works for me. Or Aries. Uh, Olympian was so attractive, he was thought to be hot. I'm glad that none of you wrote your own name in there. I'm proud of you on that one. And then Zeus is only sister to keep a throne and not marry him. Wait to go on that one, Jay. Me, the only kid answer. No one likes oh, uh, Olympian, the daughter of Ernest. Aphrodite. Nice and done. Aphrodite comes in. And this was the Olympian that was wise. Athena. Zeus is the only brother to not be an Olympian. <laughs> Otherwise, no. I'm also proud of no one writing in Rue Hits name for that one. And the hunting Olympian helped her mother. Artemis. You know, giving birth to the brother. Uh, Olympian tricked his father into puking. He is. Zeus is the only sister to not have a throne. Yeah. You again. And Speedy Olympian. Hermes, the cow skewer. <laughs> that was his nickname on his jacket. Uh, ask the wet brother for permission. And the last Olympian to get a throne is correct. What we're going to get to today, because we have not told that story, but today we do tell that story. Female Olympian has two children on thrones. And that's where Hera comes in. But Leto is not a female Olympian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Worse. She's a female Titan, but there's a difference. And this Titan was the father of four of the Olympians. Overall, it was an easy quiz. So here's my question for you. What do you guys think was the average grade on just my advanced class? I don't know. Because you guys took a different one than my regular quiz. I made your questions tougher than I made them to try to get more things. You're saying every single kid got every question correct. I'm already telling that. I got a question wrong. I got a question wrong. 92. 92. 92. Wow, that was quite a jump from 100 to Ava missing one, and we dropped it. Ava, you carry a lot of power. Minus, minus. He technically should have gone in the set because if anyone else had to pay attention, got the first attempt wrong, it actually gave me the correct answer. I didn't feel like picking it again. Apparently you can't fight some good laziness. Yes. I had kids repeat the same same answer. They put crows down from one. Oh no, I'm not here Warrior Hera, I apologize for accusing you of writing up crow. By the way, the answer was 99%. You were close at 100. So yeah, almost every kid got it correct. Yeah. Of the 15 questions, yeah. how many do you think yeah. everybody got perfect? Zero. Everyone got eight. Of, of my third and fourth period combined, oh, there wait, were third 15 third. questions. Oh, it's not a lot. It doesn't know how many of the questions, not how many kids. 14. 
14 of the questions. 13 and 12. 11. Nine. 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 So nine. nine of the 15, every single kid got correct. What? These are the ones that people got correct and did not miss. Apollo, Demeter, Aphrodite, Athena, Hades, Artemis, Estradiotis. How did you not get two? Again. So Zeus they missed, Poseidon they missed, Hephaestus they missed. So yeah, it sort of made me smile too as I was sort of going through. Which also shows that whether you guys like or not, you're learning. Um, because if I had given you that same quiz from that first day we got into Greek mythology, I do not think you guys all would have gotten a 99% on it. Um, there's a chance some of you who are geeky with your Greek mythology, you might have done well, but overall, no, I wasn't trying to. But overall, well done. You guys are getting smarter, even as you try to resist it by shutting down your brains as often as you can. Oh, yes, Evan. Um, Yes, it's like a life goal. You're asking me if this is a job. You can... Yes, it is a career that you can go after. Now, let's see, we got to the filling. Oh, on the blue sheet, we have now finished page three and we are beginning page four. So you should have page one done, page two done, page three done, and now we're going into page four. Oh, man. Which Olympian gave up her seat with Dionysus? Yes and no. Officially, no. For any kid that paid attention, yes. Was, I don't know. I can't just give away answers. It takes all the fun out of things. Tyler? I have four of this. Do you want to direct some God in the Hermes? Uh huh. That's all. That's good. Yeah, that's four of them. Uh huh. Oh, that is also true. Hera had two children. Who did Hera have children with? Zeus. So Hera's children would be Zeus's children. Who are Hera's only two children to have thrones? Nicely done. I know. So we haven't gotten to that story yet. Oh. Uh, so as we fill in this piece of paper, let's do the quick rewindy thing. And I'm going to show you guys the hand signs and the dances. So we're going to remind you of our dances before we begin dancing together today. Let's see how it works. So as we, did you just feel your heart <laughs> just speed up on that one? You're welcome. So we have, as we go through and do our things, we start off with, with who is the first god to get a throne? Zeus. Zeus. What do you say for Zeus? Big boys. Oh, for real. real. There right. you go. I put king of all gods. What is our hand sign for Zeus? Right. Right. This is where you go. I've got to do much better. It's going to be embarrassing. Uh, uh, nope, doing it wrong again. I was holding the wrong thing. All right, then you go. Zeus. Zeus. King of all gods. And then you listen to the kid make a squeaky sound. <laughs> Excellent. So then I have to take a moment after Ryan. Accident. Accident. Yeah, well. Accidentally. Yeah, well. I mean, he almost hit Sophia, but she was short. <laughs> That's why it's part of the episode how short is Sophia? After Zeus, our next one to get a throne is Hera. Hera. What do we say for Hera? <laughs> it's almost like there's a piece of paper right in front of you. Oh, right. That's, what I wrote. that's why I get to make fun of you. Yeah, Queen of all gods, and then a hand sign. I should be done. Apparently, sun. those of you who are making peacocks on your head. By the way, for those of you who are worried about the dancing later, realize here's the time where you want to do it because everyone has to do it. And so it's going to make your life a little bit easier as opposed to those kids who are just staring at you. Home children, you might want to practice also, just for letting you know that this is the part where it makes your life easier. Or ignore me, and that's an option also. After Hera, our next one to get a throne. Poseidon. 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 Nicely done. God of the ocean. And then you do whatever your swimming thing may be. After Poseidon, our next one to get a throne is... No, Hades. Why is Hades not listed? Go. Our next one to get a throne and keep it is. Meteor comes in. 
Reading the harvest. That's where you do your lawn mowing. Also, reading lawn mowing. After Demeter, our next word to get a throne is Hestia. Why is Hestia not up there? Which is the story we're going to get to in just a moment. So, our next two to get thrones are Hephaestus and Ares comes in. For Hephaestus, what do we say? Metal Smith and the hand sign for him. And Hephaestus' brother would be Ares. For him, he is the. And then the hand sign that everybody takes the nice one that looks like trying to embarrass each other. After Ares, our next two to get thrones are going to be the twins. And to run you speedily through their background story, their mom Leto was a titan, yes. and then Zeus shows up Mac on her. She said, no, what form does he take? A swan. And that's when he goes all creepy mode and the swan. And then she falls in love with swan. So yes. love you, swan. And then we have friendship. And then after her friendship, he leaves her. Who shows up? Who was not very happy and says, You done been with my man. It says because of that, she puts a curse on the letter, which says, "Gonna run forever." Stay. As long as close. As long as your feet are touching my husband's kingdom. How is it she makes her run? She just runs. There you go, giant snake called a python. Shades after her, she screams, runs, and then it turns out she's pregnant and gets pregnant to her pregnant her as she runs. Goes by Mount Olympus for running and screaming and they're going by until so Zeus comes up with a plan using an island. What does he want her to do? Jump on it and then we decided to run by, jump on the island to be safe. No. Tracking! And then before the snake gets a chance to jump, what happens to the string? Poseidon comes, comes up, does his dance, does his dance yeah. and then breaks it from there and disappears. As soon as the curse is broken, what does she do? She's a baby. How many? Two. And that's when she gives birth. That after the babies are born, what do they do? To make umbilical cords too. You can't just like flip them; they kind of awkward. Uh, and so the umbilical cords are shooting in the snack sack. And it's and Hera feels bad because they spent their childhood stuck inside a parent's belly. So she says, "You guys deserve to be Olympians." And what does Artemis become the god of? And some ladies and our hand sign for her. Back to done, pulling back. And Apollo becomes the god of sunny music. Not just hotties. Don't forget the sun. I mean, I know hotties are important. And you're like, oh, hi. And then the hands, apparently, some of you are really eager on those hot guys. Like, They're all over the place. Oh my God. <clears throat> Sorry. After Apollo, our next one they get a throne is. And that's for seashell play. And she is the. But before we get to her, who overthrew Ernest? What weapon does he use? Then every time he does choppy choppy, what happens? Chunky bit. Chunky bit falls, forms Aphrodite. Aphrodite floats out on the ocean until one day her foot steps out on the land. As soon as her foot has land, who's aware of her? But with that, two reasons why Zeus is aware of her. The two reasons being, very she's very attractive. The other one being, there's a lot of flowers. <laughs> why did he not know about her out here? She was attractive there. She was in the water. That's why she's up. There you go. It's his kingdom, and she's a hottie. It's both. There are lots of people in his kingdom he doesn't care about. There's only one that's the hottest girl to ever exist. But he does not know she exists until she touches his kingdom. So it has to be both parts, hot chick and in his kingdom. Hang on, I'll get you yelling at me in a second. And he tells her she gets married. Who does she get married to? But who does she want to date? Aries. Because she's not a good person, and that's where the lovey bits come in. Then, then, there we go. She said love and beauty, and our hand sign for her is? Um, I don't know, art. There you go. I can't be Ava. Yeah, but it's not connected to the other way. That's completely different. Way. It's like a math equation, like calculus. Right. I heard calculus. 
Correct. Yeah. That was how it's thought also. Jay. Sure. Our next one after Aphrodite to get a throne is? Athena. Athena, what do we say for her? And the hand sign. Point, point to the next one. And then we get to our last open throne. Goes to? Nice done. And here we get to Zeus not being friendly with the Titan. This time he's friendly with a wood nymph, which is like an elf, and then they're friendly. How soon after their friendship did she give birth? That day. Because again, it's kind of weird. The name of the baby is, and then she lays down to take a nap. Hermes takes off to go do his thing. Starts examining and exploring the woods. What does he find in the woods? As you do, because that's where else we can find golden cows. What does he do with the golden cows? Steals the golden cows. That's what else we can do with golden cows to find them. Brings them back to the cave, hides them in the cave, except for one cow, which sacrifices a special cow that you have to go and stab. Special cow. His knife that every baby carries. Duh. And then cow dead. All right. This is cow dead. This is baby asleep. Completely different things. Or you get a couple on that one. And then who shows up looking for Moo Moo's? Because they were his special Moo Moo's. He was looking for Moo Moo's. Can't find Moo Moo's. Finds Moo Moo's in there. Hermes is no longer a baby. He's now a young man. And Hermes, while he's listening to these people yell, what does he find in the cave? No. 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 Turtle, turtle shell. shell. What does he do with the turtle shell? Close. No, it, looks it looks like a harp. It's actually called a, a lyre or a lyre. Yeah. Harps were larger and lyres were portable, if you will. Yeah. It was like the laptop of harps. And eventually they trade each other. What does Hermes get? He gets the uh, horses. And, the cows. Oh, yeah. and what does Apollo get? The the lyre. Lyre. There you go. And they do a little tradey, tradey Boy, thing. Hermes gets to go up to Mount Olympus. Zeus is super happy because this kid is sneaky and fast. So what job does he give him? And our hand sign for him. Runny, runny, runny. Or for some kids, like they're trying to hit each other. I'm going to punch my chin. I'm like, apparently I've realized that some children have never run before. When I'm like, messenger, the running guy. They're like, I'm running. And I'm like, apparently from a bear. Yes, Amanda. Because she's not half Titan. It's when you mix nymph and Titan together, that's when you get that genetic anomaly. Titans grow up normal, nymphs grow up normal. When they mix together, you get them that. And so, uh, because apparently he once he got to Mount Olympus, they started giving him the nectar and ambrosia, and it's supposed to stabilize things. There's every chance if Zeus hadn't brought him in that he might have like aged all the way to like an old man in like four days and then died. But Zeus brought him up and like started giving him Gatorade and he was like, it's tasty. And things were good. So now for our next story, we're going to have to flip flop two stories because to get to Dionysus, our last one to get a throne, we have to have humans. Humans don't exist yet. So I'm going to give you the human story in a moment. But I'm going to do you the Dionysus part first so we can do the dancing. And then I'm explaining to you this. Mine. I don't think so. I just have water. Uh, not at the moment, but eventually, sure. All right. So on this one, we what happened to the first race of humans? So we're getting ready to create the second race in a moment. But a special thing with the second race is they're made different. The second race of humans, it was thought that they could not see a god in their true form. We mentioned the fact that gods could shape shift and take the form of animals. Well, the gods in their true form were supposed to be this radiant balls of light. And if a human looked at a god in their true form, it would literally vaporize you. Like watching a, a vampire in the daylight. You'd be like, ah! Boom! And you would just disappear. So whenever the gods came down to earth, they would take the form of a human, like an animal form, but the animal they chose was a human, which to them was a form of animal. And so they would come down and they had to make sure they didn't go into their true form because, and they could stay human sized and go into their true form. They just had to sort of mask it and not go around killing people. Because if Zeus walked around a village in his true form, people would be like, boom, 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 boom. They'd be like just disappearing left and right. 
which is fun until you kill an entire village. So he would have to make sure he changes his shape. So for today's story, Zeus decides that he is going to take a human form and come down and be friendly with a human. He's now been with Titans and realized that was bad. He's now been with nymphs, realized that was bad. But he figures humans are safe because they're not Titans, so everything is good. So he comes down to Earth, takes human form, and goes around this village until he finds a girl by the name of Semele. S-E-M-E-L-E, like simile, but with all E's. And he and Simile are friendly. Shortly after their friendship, Zeus breaks it to her. It's like, hey, uh, just wanted to let you know, uh, I'm Zeus, which I knew that because of my beard and my toga, uh, but my wife, Hera, is probably going to kill you. Uh, so you can't let anyone know we've been together. You have to keep it a secret. Do not tell people that I've been with you. She's like, well, what if I'm pregnant? He's like, you definitely can't tell anyone if you're pregnant. And I'll be back in like a year or two because, you know, gods are different. And I'll come back to check on you. She's like, okay. And he disappears. She does her best to not tell anyone about this whole I've been with Zeus thing. But as she gets pregnant her and pregnant her, people keep bothering and asking her, like, hey, are you pregnant? She's like, um, I am. Like, who's the father? She's like, I can't tell you. It's a secret. Well, one day, one of her friends wears her down. They're like, Come on, Semele, you can tell me. Best friends tell each other. Was it Bob? Bob, the guy from town? No. Was it Joe? You've been dating Joe. And finally, someone's like, no. Okay, come here. You can't tell anyone. This is just between you and me. It was Zeus. Her friend's like, wait, wait. The Zeus? And she's like, the Zeus. He came down. He and I were together. He kind of loves me. And now I'm pregnant with his child. Her friend goes, oh, my God. And they like the whole slappy hands thing. That's so cool. And she's so excited by her friend's reaction. She's like, oh, why have I been keeping this a secret? People think it's the greatest thing in the world. Zeus is an idiot. I should definitely be telling more people about this. So the next time someone asks, and she's walking to the village, like, hey, are you pregnant? She's like, I am. Come here, come here. Zeus is the father. But you can't tell anyone because it's a secret and his wife is crazy. And they're like, oh my God. He's like, oh, I'm not kidding. Again, she gets this positive reaction. So it gets to the point where just walking through town. People are like, hey, simply how, how am I pregnant? From Zeus. Zeus did it. Zeus is the baby daddy. But don't tell anyone. His wife is a psycho. And so she gets to the point where she just tells anybody who will talk to her. Needless to say, this gets back to Hera, not one known as Olympus, who is just sitting up there and she sees like two other gods walking by and they're talking like, did you know there's a girl down on Earth who's pregnant with one of Zeus's children? And the girl's bad talking Hera, and Hera hasn't done anything about it. Oh, I know that girl's a loser. And Hera's like, and decides that she is going to solve this problem. But at the same time, she's tired of killing women, right? Who's been there? So she decides that she's not going to kill this woman. Instead, she is going to make Zeus kill this woman. He's like, you know what? If I make Zeus kill his own girlfriend, Maybe he'll stop being friendly. So she comes up with a plan to make Zeus do the killing instead. Hera takes the form of an old woman. And she's like, bee, 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 my old woman stick. And she goes down to this old woman form and finds the village where Simile is hanging out. Second kid got dropped. Come back. And she's walking around this village. He's like, come here, Freaky, Freaky, Freaky girl. Come here, Freaky. I don't know how you call Freaky. Uh, and eventually she's wandering the town and she runs into this pregnant woman. She's like, hi, are you Simla? And someone's like, am I the one that was with Zeus? Yeah, Zeus and I are friendly. Uh, but be careful, don't tell his wife. His wife's a psycho. All right, see you later, crazy old woman. And just turns and she's like, wait, 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 come back here. And someone's like, yes, random old lady I just met a second ago. She's like, I have a question for you. How do you know the guy you were with was Zeus? Someone's like, ah, woman, obviously because he had a beard and he was wearing a toga and he said, my name is Zeus. So obviously it was Zeus. And he goes, well, how do you know it was not just some creepy old man? Someone's like, well, I mean, it could, I mean, you're, yeah, that's a good point. It could be just a creepy old man. And Harold's like, exactly. So if you don't know for sure 
you should probably make sure next time you see him, have him prove that he's Zeus. So then he goes, well, how do I do that? Herod goes, well, what you want to do is the next time you see him, make him show you his true form. That's how you're going to find out if it's actually Zeus. So then he goes, no, you crazy old woman. We can't see God in their true form. It'll kill us. Everyone knows that. Herod goes, no, that's a rumor spread by the gods. I have it on good faith from my sister's best friend's cousin's dog that if you ever see a god in their true form, they have to marry you. But the gods don't want you to know that, so they spread this other lie. So if you see him in his true form, he has to leave his wife and marry you. So if he doesn't show you his true form, then he's one of two things. Either it's not Zeus and it's a creepy old man, or it is Zeus and he doesn't love you. And somebody's like, oh, that's a, that's a good point. Thank you, random old woman. And Hera's like, you're welcome. And then turns around and leaves. Similarly, spends the next couple months getting angrier and angrier thinking about it. She's like, she's right. That random old woman was correct. It is either a creepy old man or Zeus doesn't love me. So he shows up. I'm going to make him show me my true form. If not, I'm going to slap that beard right off his face. And so she gets angrier and angrier. And yes, Joe, go for it. And so as it continues, one day, while she's really pregnant but has not given birth yet, there's a knock on the door. He goes and opens it. And Zeus is standing there. He's like, hey, baby, it's me. It's Zeus. He's like, ah, and throws a hand in his face. She's like, don't you, hey, baby, it's Zeus me. She's like, you're not Zeus. You're a creepy old man. He's like, whoa, where did this come from? She's like, you don't love me. He's like, well, I mean, what are you saying that for? He's like, well, because obviously if you love me, you'd show me your true form, but you don't love me. He's like, I can't show you my true form. If I do that, you're going to die. He's like, uh-huh, I've seen your true form. Your true form is creepy old man. And she starts getting into the face. There's snapping involved. There's a little head wriggle that goes back and forth. There's some hand throwing into the face. And Zeus gets really fed up. He's like, listen, woman, stop yelling. He's like, I ain't gonna stop yelling at you. You're gonna get you. And finally, as she keeps yelling, he's like, fine, 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 fine. You wanna see my true form? She's like, uh-huh. I don't think he's like, done. And goes into his true form right in front of her. A bright light comes shining out. She's like, ah, it's true. And vaporizes right in front of him. The problem is, the baby that was inside of her is half God. So when she vaporizes, baby goes, ah, onto the ground. But the baby is not fully cooked yet. And so Zeus goes, oh, snap i made a boo-boo he's looking around he's like oh. <laughs> quickly picks up the baby he's like looking at it and he's like what am i gonna do with the and then he has an idea so he pulls out his knife and plunges the knife into his own leg and cuts his leg open from the hip all the way down to the kneecap then opens it like a giant burrito crams the baby into it and wraps his burrito leg back around it letting it heal Everyone knows when a man finds a ground baby, you cram it into your leg to bring it to full term. Common knowledge. So that's what Zeus does. And he continues along for the next couple months with this leg baby until the baby's ready to be born. And you might think, how does a man know when it's time to birth his leg baby? And that's because your leg baby starts to kick. So when you're walking along, you're like, wow, wow. and it has you have trouble walking. That's how you know it's time. So he got excited and he's like, it's time to birth my leg, baby. And he puts his leg up on like a chair and he squeezes it like a giant pimple. And out comes the leg, baby. And Zeus is incredibly proud. He's like, I birthed the leg, baby. I'm a man that gave birth to a baby twice. Because this is the second time he's birthed a baby. What was the first time? Yeah. Athena, when she popped out of his head. And so he's super excited about the birth of the baby. And so he decides any man that gives birth to a leg baby, that leg baby deserves a throne. But there's a problem. Are there any available thrones? They've all been used up. And Zeus starts throwing what scientists call a hissy fit. Rolls on the ground, kicking chairs back and forth. And he's like, why can't a man's leg baby have a throne? You have no respect for leg babies. And he's throwing a fit, and the other guy's like, oh, my God. Oh, my Zeus, what is wrong with this guy? 
And eventually, Hestia, his sister, steps up and goes, listen, I understand it's a big deal in a man's life when he gives birth to his thigh. So because of that, I respect a man's choice. So I am going to step down from my throne and let you give my throne to your late baby. Zeus is ecstatic. And so Hestia becomes the 13th Olympian and officially gives up her throne and steps to the side. Dionysus then gets to step in and become our next Olympian. And Dionysus steps up onto the throne. Now, at this time, Dionysus is the youngest god by far. The other gods have been around forever. So when Dionysus is like, I, I want to be the god of something, the other guy's like, yeah, boo-boo, we already took everything. Right. So Dionysus creates something for humans. And so everything Dionysus becomes in control of connects this new race of humans. At the time, they had water, which was bland, and goat's milk, which was weird. So the only other thing was he creates a new thing for them called this wine made out of grape juice. And they loved it for two reasons. One, it wasn't water or come from a goat. And two, if you drank too much of it, what would happen? You would get drunk, which was important to them also. The hand sign that goes along with Dionysus, well, much like Zeus, much like Hermes, every time you see him, he's doing the same thing in pretty much every single picture. Homeboy likes his drink. So you're going to do the same thing. Dionysus. And you're going to go, God of wine. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. If you want to lift up your chug jug, I understand. So Dionysus was not just in control of that. Dionysus, so they realized, that was part of it, is that they, Greeks realized Dionysus, his name, by the way, you might be shocked to find out. Zeus was not real creative. The word Dionysus literally means born twice or two births. So when Zeus gave birth to the baby, and he was like, oh my God, I just gave birth to this baby. That's the second time it was born. Once from his mom and once from my leg. Born twice. They're like, what are you going to call it? And he goes, I just told you, born twice. They're like, that's his name? He was like, yeah, nailed it. And so he literally just called the baby born twice. Now with that, he was also connected to many of the two things. One, Greeks realized that if you drank too much wine, you got special in the head. And so because of that, there were two sides to his personality, the sober side and the not so sober side. And so he was known for throwing parties, huge parties called bacchanalias. And these things would be thrown out in the woods and people would show up and they were like the biggest classic college raging parties you can imagine. The issue is Dionysus was also known for getting drunk at his own parties and then killing everybody who was there. He'd get in the middle of a party and be like, you know what's really fun? Killing people. Watch. Boom. And all the people would die. He was like, ha, ha, ha. oh, you're all dead. Well, party tomorrow. And he would just kill people. And so that became a bit of a drawback to some of his parties. So sometimes he only went to one of them. But one of the other things he liked to do at the parties was that he would make people perform skits. He was like, you know what, I like this big war that happened. And he'd have the people act out the wars or act out scenes from things that he saw happen. He need to have them perform them. It happened so often, he became known for it. And there's actually a term for it when you have people who perform a thing for you in front of other people called theaters and plays. Dionysus is yeah. literally yeah. the creator <laughs> of theaters and plays. Those of you who know theater and plays, there is a symbol for theater and plays that yeah. is connected to Dionysus. Uh, he is correct. That thing is connected to him. The tragedy and comedy masks were coming from him and the fact that he had a happy side and a sad side. So they started using those masks to represent the two sides of his personality. So that becomes Dionysus, the last one to get a throne. I mean, it makes sense since his dad threw a fit to order for him to get a throne. So I mean, it's the same idea. Jay? Why did the bottom right to have butt chins. <laughs> I don't know. It's just the way they were drawn. Oh, okay. So now, 
is the fun time where we get to dance. Oh, no. So we're going to practice dancing a couple times before we get a chance to move forward to the next part. Uh, hang on one second. I have to do a thing before we practice. Oh, you got lucky. I was going to remove that kid. Uh, we'll remove this kid instead. I uh, know. Oh, right. As I hit the button, he magically appeared. I didn't want you to miss out on the dancing because my heart's. So we're going to practice it together like four times. And then you guys get to volunteer. So I'm going to do it with thing behind me so you can see it. And then we're going to do some tougher. And it's going to get tougher and tougher each time. Your piece of paper in front of you, if you have it in your head, you can put it to the side. If you feel you still need to look at it, I completely understand. Ava. Well, yeah, you got to start early. They're gods. You can't be a slacker like those other kids. Yeah. Tyler. You want to spin points on it? Five points. Yes, because you spend points all the time. You're addicted to it. Yeah. It's Tyler's first time. I know. We have to stop your points. It is. I see you. And yes. All right. Let's practice the dance first. Ready? So I'm going to go through and do it. You're welcome to do it with me, or you can watch the first time through. So I'm going to screen behind me. Home children, here's where you want to do the practicing things if you want to also, because it might be you as the chosen one in a second. So what it looks like, and I'm not going to scare, my, my hands are empty, so I don't scare Flippo. All right. So we have Zeus, king of all gods. Hera, queen of all gods. Poseidon, god of the oceans. Demeter, god of grains and harvest. Hephaestus, god of metalworking. Ares, god of war. Aphrodite, god of moon and hunting. Apollo, god of hotties and the sun. Aphrodite, god of love and beauty. Uh, Athena, god of wisdom. Hermes, messenger god. Dionysus, god of wine. By the way, for those of you who are here in person, did you notice the posters go in order? So if you get lost, literally, yeah, that was my gift to you for those of you who have paid attention. All right, so now, hang on. Um, those of you who are watching the video, there's going to be a break because I'm going to pause it so you can't see this next part. And then we're going to come back and there might be crying in the background because I'm going to restart the recording after we get done practicing and having kids go. So when we restart, if you hear crying, just ignore it. Hey, I said stop crying. You'll get past it. You do realize you make it sound like the entire room has cried. And if only two kids were going, unless it was like watching them go made you cry. And you're like, that kid was so awkward. And like, that's why you're crying. You're, you're acting maybe a little strong. All right. Um, one, on the uh, mythology page on Canvas, I've added new things to it. So now we have introduced the gods to you. So now moving forward, I'm not introducing as many new gods. It's now going to be stories involving those gods. And so a lot of them, I do have paper copies of the stories to help you out. And so you'll be able to find the paper copies on there. Hang on. Excuse me. So if you want them, they're there. But if not, you can keep listening to me tell stories in class. Jay? Um, can we start from the bottom up so that we can hear the story of Harry Cheese? No, we're not to Harry Cheese yet. You'll just have to wait. Harry Cheese? Heracles. Hercules is the, the Greek. Oh, Harry Cheese? Roman is Hercules. Harry. Greek was Harry, Harry Cheese. <laughs> so anyway, I don't even want to begin this conversation. So I told you we had to flip-flop stories where we had to get to humans. Here's the part where we get to find out where humans come in. Uh, you said the first race of humans, what happened to them? Died in the Titan. So they all died off during the big war. Now that Zeus becomes king of all the gods, a few years go by and he's like, I want humans again because I have the same issue my dad did. I like to hurt people. And so I want to have little humans in order to go hurt them. But the other issue is they killed off all the animals too during this whole big war. Everything that was not immortal died. So because of that, Zeus is like, we need to make humans and we need to make animals. So he decides to go back to the same person who created the first batch. Because that was slightly out of order too, but we sort of skipped that one for now. 
So at this point, uh, those were also special cows. They're golden cows, not normal cows. Squirrel! So at this point, Zeus decides that he wants to bring in the animals and the people. Who made the first race of humans? Prometheus. So he goes to talk to Prometheus. Like, hey, buddy, uh, we need people and we need animals so that Apollo can have golden cows so Amanda can stop harassing me. And Prometheus is like, all right, well, here's the issue. You currently have me doing a job where I'm setting up your new government and getting things going on Mount Olympus. I can't do both. I can either set up your government or I can make these new things. Which one's more important? Zeus is like, ah, oh, man, both are important, but fine. Government's more important. I'll find someone else to make people. So he goes looking for someone else to make the next race of humans. He's like, you know what? I almost just burned my house down. Better luck next time, Benji. Uh, don't give up. Uh, and so it's like, if I can't get Prometheus, what's the next best thing? Epimetheus. So he goes and talks to Epimetheus. And he's like, Epimetheus, uh, your brother made the first race of humans. Can you help me make this race? And Epimetheus is like, you betcha, buddy. I'm great at not messing things up. And Zeus is like, that's what I've heard also. So he's like, all right. And we have a new way of making humans. Humans 2.0. Because the first race of humans were made out of Mud and water. Dirt and water. And he's like, we're doing much better now. We have this stuff called Play-Doh. And Play-Doh is going to work much. Technically, it was like this magic clay. But Play-Doh is the same idea. Play-Doh he's like, we're going to use this magic clay that. slash Play-Doh stuff. Now, we don't have to make each individual person. This clay is much better. You make one, throw it down to earth, and then it just goes like, like a little virus spreads everywhere. Same thing with animals. You just make one, throw it down there, and blah, 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 forms everything. He was like, so you're going to use this clay of all these different colors to make all of the different animals and humans that are there. That means he's like, oh, I got this. He's like, hang on, I have another thing for you. And he brings out this giant tackle box and places it on the table. He's like, is, it, is that a tackle box? He's like, it is. But when he opens up the tackle box, instead of lures to catch fish, it has things like claws and teeth and eyes that can see in the dark and fur. He's like, you're going to use all of these things to make all the different animals and stuff that are out there. You give them these different things, and that way you have like all these variances, and you can do like that. Epimetheus is like, oh, that's really cool. I can do that. Zeus goes, but do not mess up humans. Humans are the most important thing because humans are going to do sacrificing. And sacrificing is super important to the gods. So you have to make sure that humans don't get messed up. He's like, okay, don't mess up humans. I got you. I can do this. He's like, good. So Zeus leaves him alone. Epimetheus makes his big kid decision. He's like, all right, you know what I'm going to do? So that I don't mess up humans, I'm going to practice by making animals first. And I'm going to get really good at making stuff. And then once I've got my practice in, then I make humans. He's like, yeah, who's the smart one now, Prometheus? Turns out. Prometheus, but he has good intentions. So he starts off. He's like, all right, let's begin. Reaches over and grabs like some green clay. He's like, I'm going to make a string. He makes a string. He's like, ooh, that's good stuff. Reaches in there, grabs some scales, grabs them on there, reaches in, grabs some teeth, dunk, dunk, puts them in there, makes a snake and throws it down there. And he's like, ooh, I'm really good. He's like, let's try another one. Another piece of green, rolls out another string, puts more scales on it, two more teeth. He's like, well, I got something different. Uh, Legs. Like leg, 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 makes a, throws it down. He's like, man, I'm getting good. He's like, oh, that's what I got. He's like, let's go bigger this time. He grabs like the chunk of the gray Play-Doh. He's like, I'm going to make like a balloon. He's like, oh, it's so adorable. He's like, ooh, uh, let's put like a little string on the butt. We'll call it a tail. We're going to put a big string on the front. We're going to call it a nose. Uh, we're going to grab the ears. And rawr, rawr, rawr. That's perfect. He's like, we're going to put some big teeth on there and some Big old fat legs on the bottom, makes up, throws it down, and just keeps clapping. Like, this is great. Ends up making like a giraffe and deer and dogs and throwing them all down to earth. They start populating. Goes through all the stuff that is in there. So he's getting down to the very end of all the things. He's like, oh, he's like, I still got some beaker. He's like, ooh, let's have fun. So he grabs and pulls that. like, ooh, it's not like a brown dog body. That's kind of fun. Let's take off those legs, though. Ooh, duck feet. <laughs> Why not? He puts like the four little duck feet on there. It's like, ooh, and a duck face. <laughs> Why not? And then puts it on there. It's like, what's that? Oh, I stepped on that tail. 
that's so good. And puts it on the back of it, makes a platypus. And he's like, oh yeah, that did not turn out well. We'll just, we'll put that in Australia. No one goes there. Uh, and just sort of puts it down there. And he's like, perfect. He's like, I nailed it. I'm good at this. The box is empty. Ep realizes he forgot to do something which was, he was like, oh, snap, I forgot to make people. He's like, ah, 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 grab some clay. He's like, squishy, 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 squishy. He's like, um, um, fur. All right, let's give us some fur. No, there's no fur left in the box. Looks on the ground, he's like, oh, there's a scrap of fur. That's like just enough to cover the top of the head. Eh, good enough. Uh, he was like, oh, we'll give it like eyes that can see in the dark. Uh, nope. All we have are these discount eyes. That was good enough. They might need glasses. And puts them in there. He's like, but we can give them like fangs so they can bite it. Yep, nope, just bite fang dust. That's almost the same thing. And puts them in there. He's like, but claws. And we'll give them, yeah, no, they're going to need manicures. And so makes all these leftover bits. So humans don't have good claws or teeth or eyes or fur or any of the good stuff animals do because. We were made by the God of idiots and he made all the animals first and humans got all the leftover stuff. So then he throws it down to earth and he's like, ah, no one's looking, fuck it. And then throws it down there. And that's how humans got created. They are. So now humans exist. Once humans exist, Zeus comes back. He's like, all right, humans. And he calls together all the humans that exist after me. He's like, all right, we're going to explain to you this thing called sacrifices. Sacrifices are super important to the gods. This was sort of their form of social media. The more sacrifices you got, the more popular you were. The more popular of a god you were, the more powerful you became. So the thought was, if you sacrifice the gods, they got more likes on their Instagram. And the more likes they got, the more bragging rights they had over the other gods. So you want the gods wanted you to sacrifice to them. So he tells the humans, here's how you go about doing a sacrificing thing. Sacrificing is great, but do not sacrifice other people. You're hard to make and it's exhausting, but you can sacrifice food. Anytime you want a God to do something for you, you sacrifice food and you pray over the food. And that's how we know to come do a thing for you. So as an example, if I'm getting ready to go swimming and I don't want to drown, who would I pray to? Poseidon. Nice. We're done. If I'm getting ready, my wife is getting ready to have a baby, and we want it to come out healthy, who do we pray to? So Zeus became worried that these other gods might become more popular than him. So Zeus makes a rule. Anytime that humans pray to the gods, you also had to sacrifice to the king of the gods. So if you're sacrificing to, for swimming, you would sacrifice to Poseidon and also to? If you're having a baby, you sacrifice to Hera and? So that way, he always makes sure he's bringing in more votes than any other god. So he makes sure he stays up there at the top of all these things. So here's an idea of how the sacrifice would work. Let's say I think Joey Jojo is adorable, and I want Joey Jojo to fall in love with me. Who am I going to sacrifice to? Aphrodite. And so what you do is you would take a bowl of food, like a honeycomb, and I'd take my bowl of honeycomb, and I would shake it be like, Oh, mighty Aphrodite, make Joey Jojo fall in love with me because he's totes adorable. And I would take my little sacrifice and then I would put it outside my back door. And then I would take a pinch of it and put it over to the side for Zeus. And I'm like, that's for Zeus. And I put the bowl outside back, close the door, and I'd wait till the next day. If I come outside the next day and the bowl's empty, my prayers have been answered and Joey Jojo better watch out because I'm coming after him. If the bowl is still full, then my wishes and my prayers were not answered, and Joey Jojo's free because apparently he'll never love me anyway. So, knowing all of this is make believe, was the bowl ever empty the next day? No. Ah, it was. So, my question is if they're make believe gods, how would the bowl become empty the next day? <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> random animals would eat it. Now realize the Greeks were not complete morons. They knew the animals were eating it. Why did that make sense in their religion? Because the animals were eating it. Nicely done. Because it was the God. 
if Aphrodite comes down and eats the cereal and I hear food out my back door, I can't just like, ha ah, and open it. And Aphrodite's like squatting, like, ah, and like has like that awkward eye contact thing. That's not going to work out. So obviously she takes the form of a raccoon. So when I open it up and I see a raccoon there, I don't go, no, bad raccoon, and punt it. Because then you're punting a god. You're like, I made portrait. So the raccoon just sit there and eat, like, oh, I'm Aphrodite. Yap, 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 yap. And then you shut the door and just leave the raccoon sitting there eating it. So that became their idea of sacrificing up to the gods. You leave the food out there. If it disappears, then you are good to go. Yes. Not every raccoon is a god. Some of them are just raccoons. Now, if you were praying to Aphrodite and you left it out there and then you killed that raccoon, Yes, your love life may not be good for a while, Ava. I wish you the best of luck. And also, you can't kill Aphrodite. You would just kill her raccoon form, but she'd probably still be mad at you. Yes. Um, so, is there any stories of, like, Greeks, like, opening up the door and seeing, like, Aphrodite eating their honeycomb and then be like, mine now, and then just, like, take her and, like, put her in a cage? She would just take her normal form. She's not going to stay in raccoon form and be like, I made a poor choice with my raccoon body. She would just be like, boom, and just go back to her normal form and be like, you're an idiot. And you're like, yeah, yes, I am. I chose poorly. So uh, I would. I wish you the best of luck. Now you have a weekend project. You can put your little Aphrodite cage out back. You let me know how that one goes. So... Just so you are aware, in Greek mythology, for them, sacrifices equal popularity. It was their form of social media. This idea plays a big role in our next story coming up. The idea that Zeus needed sacrifices because without sacrifices, he has no idea who the most popular god is, and he was super addicted to social media. So then the question comes up, who was the most popular god? And the answer would be, yeah, he ain't no idiot. Zeus was always the most popular god because of his little loophole. But he would use that as his excuse to remain the king of the gods. He was like, listen, I'm the king of the gods because I get all the sacrifices. I'm the most popular one. They're like, you only get the most popular one because you're the king. He's like, yeah, right. They're like, Rawr, and they get all mad at him. So then the question becomes, who was the second most popular god if Zeus was the most popular god? Ooh, and the answer is... It rotated. It would depend on what was going on in the world. If there was a drought going on, who would you start sacrificing to? Demeter. Demeter. If they were, if it was in February and you didn't have your cage set up, who would become the most popular? <laughs> Metal. Good or right? You didn't have your cage. What's popular in February? Oh, Around the fourteenth. Oh my God. Oh. That, don't worry, that explains a lot now. I understand that where our issues come in. So just like if it was, say, around June and women were getting married, it would become Era. And so it sort of, if a war was breaking out, it would become Era. And so it just sort of depended on what was happening in the world. He always was the most popular, but then the second one would just vary from time to time. And it would sort of rotate from one time to the next. Yes. Party time. Spring break. Summer. <laughs> so for my next little, little story and a big story coming up, uh, Zeus is going to set up sacrifices and show humans there's a story that goes into setting it up, which involves a cow. Yeah. Not, I don't know why you're so excited. <laughs> Moo-moos! Not golden cows, just a normal cow. I mean, you can paint it gold later. But it was just a normal cow, not special cow. Mina, we're getting ready to. So now we're going to stop sharing. No, stop recording because we're done for today. So let's go to our next lovely thing and to there.